Welcome to Lesson 5 of Engineering Design Graphics. Today we're going to be talking about drawing in isometric. Let's lay out a bounding box on our page and take a look at the object we're going to be studying today. This is a assembly of 8020, which is a very nice thing to, to practice our isometric drawing on because it aligns very cleanly on X, Y, and Z axes. Take a minute now to observe your subject and note that in this case we have a lot of squares that really make up the critical dimensions of this object. Uh, and So if we measure the proportions of single, double, and triple squares and lay those out on the page, we can come up with a very accurate depiction. Note that every time the X and Y axes cross, the Z axis should be aligned with the crossing directly below it. Uh, this is uh, something that we can do on graph paper, uh, but of course at some point you just want to be able to draw a quick sketch and you should practice developing repetitive parallel lines as part of your development of your drawing hand. Once I have the larger structure boxed in, I'm going to start subdividing the areas that have a lot of detail. And I'm still drawing with my light construction line weight and then emphasizing with that same lighter pencil the profile of the particular end of this piece of 8020. Uh, I'm going to work my way around the drawing, uh, slowing to add detail at each face uh, where there is that detail. Again, remember that the parallel lines will stay parallel and the individual features should align with each other as I move through the drawing. I'm going to take a minute to do a profile line around this furthest top left piece of 8020 and then work my way down into the detail and the bottom face. This is probably the most detailed part of the drawing, so I'm going to take my time, set up a lot of parallel lines to structure uh, the detail and keep it clean. And now it's the same operation as before. I'm going to use the layout pencil to find the profile of this complicated face, keeping my parallel lines as parallel as possible. Even the smallest line segment will clearly uh, stand out if it's not parallel to the others. As I work through this part of the drawing, I notice that I'm beginning to get a lot of construction lines overlapping each other and even some smudging on the page. So this is a good time to take a minute, set down the pencil, and pick up that kneading eraser. Remember, we like to pull this until it's soft and then press down and lift off to get those smudges and the places where you've tracked graphite across the page off of the page, clean it up without really working the paper uh, or, or smudging, further smudging the drawing. Then I'll use my stick eraser, as you just saw, to clean up some of the small lines that are caught between the lines I want to keep. Check my subject again and get back to work with the drawing. Now I'm moving along to the last of the three pieces of 8020, and I'm going to lay these lines in with uh, smooth, even strokes, trying to keep them as parallel as possible. With the longer lines, you're going to need to find uh, a happy medium between the small wrist, wrist motions that you use for detail work and those longer, more fluid uh, elbow and even arm shoulder motions that uh, you used for the layout lines. I'm going to finish the profile lines and the smaller components of this third piece of 820 uh, and then move on to the next step in the drawing which is to draw the brackets and screws that connect these pieces together. Uh, this is in a way the hardest part of the task because it doesn't fall quite as clean. 
Well, it looks like I'm going to need to do a little erasing here because I've drawn the vertical lines of that last piece of 8020 when in fact they are covered by <laughs> the bracket. So let's draw the bracket in now. Uh, it's going to follow the same uh, Z and X axes that the uh, pieces of 8020 that it is connected to follow. Uh, it will cover them slightly uh, because it's sitting up above the bottom corner of that left hand piece of 8020. And now I'm going to locate the screws. I begin with the center line on which the four screws, or rather two of the four screws that hold this bracket on are situated. Once I find that center line, I locate a crossing center line to create the center point for the screw. And then I draw the screw within that. Notice that the hexagonal hole for the screw is off-center in the circle because the screw has a domed top and therefore the hexagonal hole is actually located um, along the x-axis uh, away from the center of the circle that I draw on the page. Let's not forget the second bracket which is mostly hidden from this angle of view uh, but shows up a little bit on top uh, behind the, the, the leftmost piece of 8020. Now, once I have all of the constituent parts drawn, I'm going to take my darker B pencil and find a profile line around the entire object. This will help the thing to pop and look fully three-dimensional. This is especially important when I'm doing a drawing like this where I'm not using uh, shading to show depth. Your line weight is all you got, so make sure you have a clear and controlled use of heavy, medium, and light lines. This is a good time to make sure you've remembered every last line that describes the part. Uh, a few things may surprise you, and you'll find them and add them. Switch back to your layout pencil if you need to, to make sure that those lighter lines don't, uh, don't end up darker than, than some of the others. Um, Notice here, too, that I'm using the heaviest line weight where the edge of the piece is visible against open space. Uh, where that can be counterintuitive is where we know we have one line that defines the edge of an object up here at the top of the bracket, for example. Uh, the line weight actually gets darker where it translates against open space, and we call that a depth cue. That's it for our drawing in isometric of an 8020 assembly. As they say, do try it at home. Thanks for watching.